Shallow Foundation Problem. Sheet is a general pre- and post-processor software which has to be customized for a specific finite element program. In order to do that, go to Data, Problem Type, and select CodeBright. Once CodeBright has been selected, all the parameters necessary to carry out a simulation are available within the Data drop-down menu. In this menu, you can find the conditions, materials, interval data, and problem data inputs. First of all, we are going to define a geometry. To do that, click on the Create Straight Line icon, or go to the Geometry menu and select Create Straight Line, which is the same, and then enter the point that define the geometry. After entering each point, press Enter and type the next. Once all the points has been, have been entered, press Escape to quit the straight line creation mode. In this case, I'm in entering the 0, 0, 0, 100, 10, 100, 100, 100, 100, 0, and then 0, 0 again. Click on the Shine option in order to close the quadrilateral perimeter. You can also enter the geometry by using a grid, but we are going to see this in the next tutorial. Now the lines have been defined, we are going to create a geometry surface. To do that, go to the geometry menu, create, nerve surface by contour. The cursor turns into a square and select all the lines forming the geometry. The blue lines turn into red after selected and then press escape and the escape again to leave the geometry surface creation mode and the new surface is created. It's represented by a purple or fuchsia square inside the geometry. To label the geometry, select View, Label, All. Now, all the lines, points and surface are numerated. Using the list command, it's possible to visualize the information about a geometry entity. To do that, I'll go to Utilities, List, in this case Lines, because we are interested in lines. Then select the lines you're interested in, press Escape, and the list entities dialog box will appear displaying the information of the selected lines. To save the work done until here, select File, Save, or click on the Save icon and a new window will open. Select the folder where you want to save it, type the file name that will appear as a directory to the system and click Save. Now let's define the attributes and conditions. First of all, the problem data. Select Data, Problem Data, Problem Data. Here we will enter all the general data that the program requires to perform a simulation. Type an appropriate text for the title of the problem. In this case, can be mechanical problem, foundation problem, after typing the name you decided. Let's continue with the other options. Then choose full execution. Here from the execution 
drop down arrow, choose no backup. From the backup arrow, choose around Y axis. In the axis symmetry, drop down arrow and leave the gravity components by default. Click accept to save the changes. A blinking message will appear and go to the equation solve tab. In this tab we are defining the equations to be solved. Check stress equilibrium, unknown displacement u, because this is a mechanical problem. Select no on the updated Lagrangian method and click accept to save the modification. Now go to solution strategy. In this tab Parameters to define the strategy used to achieve the solution of the simulation are defined. Type 1 for epsilon and theta field, 0 for the time step control, 10 for the max number of iterations, then select direct LU bug 3 for, um, for the solver type. The option elemental relative permeability is computed from is only relevant when water or gas mass balance equations are solved, so leave it by default. The max ups displacement max not ball forces uh, are one exponential minus six and one e minus eight respectively and one exponential minus one for the displacement iter core. Leave the last option by default and go to the output tab. Select partial from the right numerical process option. Type a hundred on the writing frequency edit box. Don't check write prehistometric head in additional file. We don't need it in for this simulation. Select Gauss points on the output points and check write, write all information. The select output tabs is not necessary for this type of problem, so click accept. A blinking message telling you that the changes have been saved up, appears and click close. Now we are going to define the materials. Go to data materials and start modifying the parameters of the soil material. To modify a parameter click on the desired property that are organized in different tabs. Click on any button besides the the property you are interested in modifying and modify the edit boxes. The field ITYCL contains a flag to define the type of relation considered for the constitutive law. And the fields P1 to P10 contain the parameters of the relation. All of these fields depend on the constitutive law and you can find more information in the Colbright manual in the constitutive law param uh, chapter. Now I'm modifying the linear elasticity parameters, one on the ITYCL edit box, 3000 in the P1 box and 0 0.33 in the P3 box. Now click on the same button and select surface. We are going to assign this material to a surface entity. Click yes in order to save the modifications you have made to the soil material. Now move the window so you can view the geometry. The cursor turns into a square and select the only surface we have in this case. The fuchsia square turns into red and click finish or press escape. Assign one new entity to the material soil will appear in the message box. 
go to draw soil and you will see a representation in the graphical area of the material the geometries that have a soil assigned you can always unassign the material using the unassign button and you can also save modifications onto a material using the first icon next to the material name so now click close to leave the material screen we're going to define the conditions go to data conditions conditions are all the properties excluding materials which can be assigned in the geometrical entities there are four main type of conditions force uh, displacement boundary conditions flux boundary conditions initial amounts and initial porosity in this case we are going to assign a the uniform load at the base of the foundation and the restriction of horizontal and vertical displacements. Go to the line icon, click there, select the option force displacement boundary conditions from the drop down arrow menu, select boundary stress from the forces drop down arrow menu. Type minus one on the y direction forces slash stress edit box. This value corresponds to a uniform load of one megapascal. The negative indicates the direction of the load. In this case, it's downward. And let the other values by default. Click the assign button. Select line number two that where the load is applied and click finish by clicking on the draw button force displacement boundary conditions you will visualize the condition applied represented by a red arrow here you can appreciate it so let's go back to the complete geometry view you can always use your mouse scroll to zoom in or zoom out and find a, the, the position in which the geometry is more comfortable to work with for you. So now we're going to define the restriction of the horizontal displacement. Select data, conditions, click on the line icon choose the option force displacement boundary conditions from the drop down menu select nodal forces from the forces drop down menu type 0 on the x displacement rate edit box and type 1 on the x direction prescribed leave the rest of the values by default click the assign button the cursor turns into square and select the lines 1 and 4 they turn into red color, click finish assign two new lines to conditions appears in the message box then you can draw the conditions assigned by clicking the draw button force displacement boundary conditions and you will see in the geometry the conditions assigned. Any condition can be unassigned by clicking the unassign button and selecting the entity you want to unassign the condition. So now let's define the restriction of vertical displacement condition. Go to data conditions, click on the line icon, click on force displacement boundary conditions type 0 on the y displacement rate box and type 1 on the y direction prescribed click the same button select line 5 and click finish 
Then you can click draw all conditions, exclude local axis, and in the geometry will appear symbols indicating all the conditions assigned to the entities. Click finish. Choose force displacement boundary conditions from the entity button. And now a new window will appear summarizing the force displacement boundary condition that I introduced. Each item of the entity's dialog box is labeled with an E followed by the number of the geometrical line where it is assigned. The list of strings and numbers after the dash line corresponds to the field of the condition in the same order as in the conditions window. It's possible to generate a copy of the content uh, entered for uh, an entity. For example, if you forgot to select one line that has the same conditions that other line that you already inserted, then you can select a line from the, an entity from the entity's window the selected entity is highlighted in blue and then press the transfer button and a copy of the content uh, for that condition is copied into the, the previous window. The fields can be modified and assigned to other entities. So now we're going to close this window and define the initial unknowns. To do that, click on the data menu conditions, but now click on the surface icon. Choose initial unknowns from the drop down menu. Choose constant from the distribution drop down menu and type the, val the value 0 for UX and UY boxes. Now click assign and apply the condition over the surface one. Click finish and let's define the initial stress. Select from the drop down menu initial stress. Choose constant from the distribution drop down menu. And set all the stresses and history of variables equal to zero. Click assign and apply it over the surface one. Now select the initial porosity from the drop down menu, type 0 0.3 in the porosity box, the only one. Click assign and apply the condition over the surface one. Click finish and then close. In simulations where transitory problems may occur or changes of, of boundary conditions take place with time, it's necessary to define several inter, uh, time intervals. To create uh, new time intervals, go to Data, Interval Data, and click on New Interval. Click Yes on Confirm Interval dialog box in order to copy the conditions entered in the interval 1. Now interval 2 is created and currently selected. Select hours from the unit of time, units of time discretization drop down menu and type the value 1 on the initial time box, initial time step box and on the partial time step box and type 2 on the final time box and on the final, uh, sorry, partial time box. Click accept 
and the message interval data modified appears blinking. Now go to the open other data icon and select conditions from the options menu. Click on the line icon, choose the option force displacement boundary conditions from the drop down menu. Verify that entities E1, E2, E4 and E5 appear. So we enter the entities window. Everything's okay. So we close this window and go back to the interval data window select interval number one type one on the initial time step final time partial time and partial time step boxes now click accept go to the open other data icon Select conditions, click on the line icon, choose force displacement boundary conditions, select boundary stress from forces menu, now select line force displacement boundary conditions from the unassign button and click on line 2 click finish verify that the entity 2 has disappeared from the entities window Close the entities window and return to interval data window. Material window is not sensitive to the change in the time interval. To change the values of material during the intervals, select the interval number 2 from the drop down menu. Select materials from the other options menu. Now click on any button besides linear elasticity. Click on the down arrow icon and edit the second line on the P1 edit box. Type 6000. Now click close and then select yes to save the modifications. Any other material parameter can be changed like that from one interval to another. Mesh generation consists in discretizing the geometry into nodes and elements. Conditions and materials assigned to the geometrical entities are transferred during this process to the nodes and elements. In this example we are going to use an unstructured mesh which is composed by triangular linear elements. The mesh transition is controlled by the size ratio between adjacent elements of different size. In order to modify the, this ratio, go to Utilities Preferences, select Meshing from the tab menu, and set the unstructured size transition to 0.6. Now click apply and close. Now, mesh density can be adjusted by controlling the element size at different parts of the geometry. The parameter which controls the triangular element size is the average length. This parameter can be defined over each geometrical entity. Go to mesh and structured 
assign size online enter value window appears type 1 on the edit box click assign and click on line number 2 press escape the same window appears again click close let's assign the same element size to nodes 2 and 3 go to mesh and structure assign size on point enter size window will appear and type 1 on the on the edit box click assign and select points number 2 and 3 press escape once selected and click close on the enter value window now choose mesh generate mesh and an enter size of elements to be generated window appears type 20 on the edit box and click OK a dialog window describing the mesh characteristics will appear number of triangle elements, number of nodes and click view mesh to see the generated mesh with all the parameters previously defined the mesh generated has the length of the side of the triangles below the foundation equal to 1 meter the average length of the sides of the triangles far from the foundation are equal to 20 meters and the transition from the boundary below the foundation to the far boundaries will be done with elements of increasing size by a ratio of 0 0.6 by selecting in the view menu label all the nodes and elements numeration appears on the mesh to process the data go to calculate calculate when finished a process info window appears like this and you can click post process to access the post process interface and view the results the post process interface contains many features but here I will present you only some of the most common go to window view results the view results window appears select contour field from the view drop down menu select stresses by clicking on the plus icon then SYY stresses apply and the result will appear in the graphical area the maximum and the minimum will appear in the message box and here the values with a graphical scale to understand the, the results if you wanna see the, the graphic without the, the grid go to window view style the select and display style window appears and select body from the style drop down menu in this case I I had already selected this option so nothing will change and then click close select smooth contour field from the view drop down menu and the same result stresses SYY apply and you will see a smoother graphic the displacement deformations can be drawn and analyzed too 
select let's select back control field and select displacement displacements apply and here the the results appear once again the maximum and the minimum appears in the message box if you want to visualize a deformed mesh go to mind mesh tab and click on deformed apply now we can see how the graph changes now it's a deformed mesh and to go back to the original mesh just select the original apply and now the results again let's generate a line graph in order to generate a line graph let's go to the graph icon then the line graph menu and let's select displacement displacement we have to select the points and let's select from the foundation to the bottom horizontal limit and at distance versus displacement graph appears here you can observe and you can delete the generated graph using the this option so that's all for this tutorial to exit the sheet go to files quit